A sellout of some 60,000 Shea Stadium in New York. The New York Jets have not lost in their last seven games against the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins, however, won game in first place in the AFC East, and they'll be kicking off Miami in white, the New York Jets in their green and white. Uwe von Schaman to kick it toward the right end, the closed end of Shea Stadium, and we're underway. This one for first place. It's Son, the rookie. Dropped at the 22 to 23 yard line. Youngster from Fordham puts the Jets in position at the 23, and here comes Richard Todd and the New York Jet offense. And Todd getting a standing ovation. Bruce Harper, the little jitterbug running back who's been so valuable to this Jets team all season long. And California's Tom Newton for the injured Augustiniak. Wesley Walker, Derek Gaffney on the outside, Jerome Park on the tight end, Ward, Baltimore, Fields, Alexander, and Powell, the offensive line. And their job is to protect the injured Todd. Check that starting lineup. Freeman McNeil is in the backfield and not Harper. A thrust up the middle for short yardage for the Jets on first down as the call goes to Newton, who is a free agent pick from California. The Miami Dolphins defense. Doug Vetters and the veteran Vern Den Herter on the outside with Bob Baumauer in the middle. Brzezinski, Roan, Dewey, and Gordon, the four linebackers in the 3-4 set. Don McNeil and Gerald Small at the corners and the Blackwood boys from Texas at safety. Second down, seven. Jones is split to the left. Todd's first throw. And it's caught for a first down by Walker at the 39. Dick, psychologically, a giant play for the New York Jets. Todd playing with flak jackets and amplifiers all over himself. Some question as to whether or not he'll be able to play at all. He completes that first pass. Whether or not he's going to be able to play the entire day, he at least established to Miami that he can't throw the football. And you'll watch A.J. Dewey, 77. There is a certain code out there on the field. No, no, no. Let him play. Let him play. Don't hurt him. Number 14 tied with a 14-yard gain on his first throw from his 39. Man open. It's Walker. And he threw it low. Walker, a catchable ball, could not come up with it. Gerald Small, the right corner from San Jose State, on the coverage as you look at Walt Michaels. Dick, one observation, the two pass patterns were timing passes. Uh, they require very little read by Richard Todd. He's trying to get the ball up as quickly as possible. I'm sure Joe Walton and all of the people on the Jets bench are trying to protect Richard Todd as best they can. And, and quick hitting pass plays are going to do a good job so far. Todd having his best year, 18 touchdowns, and his interception rate way down, only eight interceptions after he threw a league-high 30 last year. Freeman McNeil. And the rookie from UCLA gains about five yards out near the 45-yard line. McNeil, the number one draft pick of the Jets, returned to the lineup last week and gained 50 yards. Bob Brzezinski and Don McNeil collaborated on the stop, and now Richard Todd faces his first obvious passing down. Scott Durking and Bruce Harper, two running backs who catch the ball well for the Jets, are in the lineup with Walker split left. Barkham split away on the right side, and now Gaffney joins Walker to the left. And they stay on the ground to Harper. Fumble. And Jets it's have recovered it. by the Jets as Harper stripped to the football, and it appeared that uh, Jerome Barkham was able to fall back on the ball. It was Barkham, the right man in the right spot. Well, this may indicate exactly what the Jets are going to do for the day, try to surprise Miami. You see Brzezinski's elbow there just make contact with the ball on Harper, one of the few fumbles you'll see that young man make. Chuck Ramsey, who has the bet best net yardage punting in the AFC over 37 yards to kick to Tommy Vigorito, the number one punt returner in the AFC. So that's an interesting matchup. Vigorito fair catch at the 19-yard line. So Miami has the ball for the first time. 36-yard punt, no return. 
Miami has the ball for the first time. Now this update from Brian Gumbel in New York. Dick, at Rich Stadium in Buffalo, the Bills have pulled out a last second win. Watch this one. No time left on the clock. Joe Ferguson throwing it up for grabs, and Roland Hooks comes down with the ball. The Bills beat the Patriots 20-17. to Dick? Thank you, Brian. It's such a critical game here in the AFC East because if the Jets would beat Miami to tie them for first, Buffalo would be only a half stride behind the co-leaders. Cephalo in the starting lineup for Nat Moore. Woodley hands off to Tony Nathan. And the former star for Bear Bryant at Alabama picks up about three to the 22. Let's look at that Miami offense, guided by the second-year quarterback, David Woodley. He has Nathan, an excellent pass receiver and runner, and the big blocking Andre Franklin of Nebraska. Duriel Harris, Cephalo starting for more at the other wide receiver spot. Ronnie Lee, the tight end. Geisler, Taves, brother of Pittsburgh's Taves. Stevenson for the injured Dennard. Newman and Loxo on the front wall. And they're facing the New York Sack Exchange. Tops in the National Football League. Nathan on a draw, and he's all the way to the 34-yard line and a first down for Miami. Marty Lyons finally tripped him up. 12-yard gain. Here is that Jet defense, much heralded this year, especially for that great pass rush. Gastineau and Glecko. Glecko, the two top men in the league, with uh, Lyons and Salam in the middle, with Buttle, Blinka, and Mel, the linebackers. Donald Dykes, they'll be working on him, will Miami. Dykes for the injured Jackson at the corner. Jerry Holmes at the other corner. Ken Schroy and the brilliant second-year safety from Oklahoma, Daryl Ray. From the 34, another draw. This time Fumble. Eddie Hill, he fumbles, and Miami able to fall on the football. Hill acquired from the Los Angeles Rams in a trade at the start of the season. Almost lost the ball. Dick, the last time these two teams met down in Miami, the Dolphins had to struggle all day long. They got just 98 yards rushing, although Woodley and Strock combined for 301 yards passing in that tie. Obviously, Don Shula realizing that he can't put his team in a third down and long yardage situation to allow those four defensive linemen of the Jets to just take off after David Woodley. Second down for Woodley, the youngster from LSU. Green and Hill can't make the reception. Well, you can see what Miami's game plan is to try to negate that great pass rush of the New York Jets using draws, screens, and quickies. We welcome those of you who have watched the first place Bengals win again as they knock off another top club, the Denver Broncos, a battle for first place. Bengals win in Cincinnati. Here the fight for first in the AFC East between the Jets and Miami. Nick Kenberg, Bob Trumpy, welcome. Jets took the opening kickoff, have punted to Miami, and this is third and seven. Dolphins at their 37-yard line on their first possession. Woodley, good protection. And finally throws it away as Woodley is nailed just as he delivered the ball as Marty Lyons and Mark Gastineau in on the young quarterback. Dick, primary coverage on Tony Nathan, two out of the backfield as you watch the New York sack exchange. Pressure on David Woodley. We should be able to see 22 in the white jersey. There's Tony Nathan right there. He gets inside, outside, cornerback and linebacker coverage. Therefore, the pump, he throws it away. We'll be talking throughout this afternoon about that front four, the New York Jets leading the National Football League in sacks and on their way to an all-time record. Tom Oros, rookie from Ohio State. Bruce Harper at the other end. Good spiral kick. Harper at his 11-yard line. 15 and down at the 16. Now in the Coopstown State Hall of Fame, Bruce Harper, he smiles when he tells you about that small school that has produced another fine NFL player, Doug Dennison, who played with the Dallas Cowboys. 51-yard kick and no return for Oros, and the Jets have the ball for the second time. Dick, since these two teams met last in Miami, the Jets are 5-1, and one, the Dolphins 3-3. Three and three. The Jets are the hottest team in the AFC so far. And it's more than just a one game for either side because if the Jets win, they actually will have the edge on Miami if we get into a tie-breaking situation at the end of the year. And, of course, for the Dolphins, they're looking for a victory that give them not just a two-game lead, but a two-plus game lead over the Jets. Tom Newton's first carry. A little trouble with the footing and a gain of just a couple. Richard Tide is wearing a microphone and an amplifier 
He has a broken rib and he's trying to amplify his voice at the line of scrimmage to try to avoid injury. He does have that broken rib through the ball very well yesterday. We wonder here in the booth just how long he can go. This is a, an injury that aggravates more pain as the game goes on. Actually a yard gain on first down. Call it second and nine. Todd drills it. Complete to number 80. Johnny Lamb Jones who leaped high to spear that first down. 15 yards on the throw. That's Todd's third completion. All three have been thrown with zip on the ball, Dick. It appears that so far that rib is not bothering. Good play action fake. And he steps up off that front foot. He doesn't appear to be having any problems presently throwing the football. That's a fine reception, too, by Lamb Jones. That did not look like an injured athlete who released the ball either. He had a good gun and a first down out at the 32. That's Barkham, the tight end in motion. Shea Stadium in New York, and we welcome those of you who have just seen the Pittsburgh Steelers win in Cleveland 32 to 10. Shea Stadium in New York, the scene. Dick Enberg with Bob Trumpy. No score. Jets have the ball for the second time. Took the opening kickoff. Did not move that effectively, although Richard Todd, their quarterback, who has been headlined here in the Big Apple all week long with that rib injury, would he or would he not play, has started and is throwing the ball well. Miami had a first down, had to punt back, and now the Jets midway in the first quarter. A first down at the 46 yard line. One of the things, Dick, about Freeman McNeil, first round draft choice out of UCLA, he was injured for five weeks and last week in his first game back against New England. 13 carries, 50 yards. There's number 77, A.J. Dewey, responsible for the run. Trying to make the move or learn the position of linebacker. He does get in on the tackle, but a big first down for the Jets. Stan Waldemore for the injured Randy Rasmussen at left guard. Put the block on Dewey. McNeil again. And he has six yards to the 50-yard line before Bob Brzezinski of Ohio State could trip him up. Nick at 5'11", 225 pounds, Freeman McNeil in the next few years, I believe, is going to be one of the most talked about running backs in the game. He blocks well, which is shows his dedication. He runs the ball with good authority. He has great strength, and he runs precise patterns as a running back, which is rather unusual for a young man just one year out of college. We do not know if Todd is rigged with that microphone with the speakers and the pads. He's not using it, even if it is on. He said he felt more pain leaning over center as he was there than in throwing the ball. Harper with a catch and then an immediate hit from Larry Gordon. That'll be shy of the first down and bring up third down for the Jets. Let's again go back and summarize a minute, Bob, the importance of this game. Miami jumping off to a 4-0 start. The Jets were 0-3, then 1-1, 1-3 when they first played down in the Orange Bowl. And you covered that game. Uh, for NBC and a 28-28 tie. Since then, a dramatic difference between these two teams. Three and three for the Dolphins, five and one for the Jets. And now they're battling for first place, although Miami with a one-game lead. Bruce Harper. On third and four, Harper up the middle for a first down. The last time these two teams met, Freeman McNeil was injured. Bruce Harper came in, had 15 carries for 61 yards, five catches for 38 yards. Over the last three or four years, been the best all-purpose back in the NFL. I have a feeling that his size works to his advantage against all those big guys. He's such a small target, and he's got great acceleration through the line of scrimmage. Now 5'8", 177. Harper has a first down at the Miami 44. This is the deepest penetration by either team. Can't find the handle, but again, Todd put the ball right there and had plenty on it. And they are trying to use play action. They're trying to run backs out of the backfield to keep the pressure off Richard Todd. We'll see Freeman McNeil come out. I believe he reads the linebacker and then takes his eye off the ball just as it gets to him. Yes, he begins to look upfield because he knows that Blackwood is coming there to make the tackle number 47. So the Jets second down and 10, shy of the Miami 43-yard line. 503 remaining in the first quarter no score that's lamb jones in motion 
Todd a quickie to Walker. And he's cut down inside the Miami 40, short of a first down. What pressure on that Miami defense when you have Lamb Jones going one way and Wesley Walker, another lightning fast sprinter, the other. And Dick, once again, to refer back to that first meeting between these two teams this year, that particular pass was open all day long. As you say, with the respect that the cornerbacks must pay for their speed, they're going to be playing way off those two guys. Still, the offensive line of the New York Jets done, a, done an outstanding job in protecting Todd. Nobody's even got him on the ground. He's still clean. Third down, six from the 39 of Miami. Blitz. Todd gets a block. Look at this. Uh-oh. And out of bounds at the 29-yard line, and a flag goes down. And Todd is furious, and so are his teammates. Don McNeil says, as long as you got the helmet and pads on, I know you're hurt, but I still my job is to tackle you. And Todd comes up and ready to fight. He wanted to take the guy on. First of all, that's got to be a gigantic play for the New York Jets, psychologically, to see the sacrifice that this guy is making. Great block there on Dewey 77 by Joe Fields. Look at him. This is a broken rib, loose cartilage, and he takes a hit just below the rib cage. Penalty on Miami, another 15 yards. Big play. Now, Bob, if, if you did not know that, that the quarterback, Todd, was injured, he was hit in the field of play, I didn't see anything illegal about the hit. Personal foul, unfortunate on the defense, first down. Maybe it's the angle of the camera, but it did appear on the replay that he was in the field of play, and even though he is injured, Don McNeil is trying to do his job and bring him down. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time all year for me. Nevertheless, it's a 15-yard penalty, and the Jets are deep. Freeman McNeil well covered by Larry Gordon, who has excellent mobility in that outside linebacker spot. Sutter since a rookie from Arizona State. Well, Todd was about as mad as if he had seen a, a reporter he didn't like on that last tackle. No comment. <laughs> Dick, if I may make one statement, uh, I think the penalty flag was, flag was probably thrown on the sideline there because Todd was not going up the field anymore. He was going out of bounds, and the intent of the defensive back to make contact with him, they probably deemed unnecessary. But you are right. If he is on the field of play, he's got to take his licks. Well, he certainly is, and it is a courageous start for Todd, who is playing in pain. Broken left rip. Play goes inside. Freeman McNeil short yardage. Adam Joseph Dewey, number 77 from LSU, made the tackle. It'll be third and long at the Miami 12. Final scores, the Steelers win big in Cleveland. Denver, battle of first place, ran into a Cincinnati club that's red hot, and the Bengals win again. Buffalo in the final seconds, beating New England. The Giants have defeated Philadelphia. Major upset. The Giants win today against first place Philadelphia. The Lions will be seeing them on Thursday, Turkey Day. New Orleans upsets Houston. And you imagine Bob Phillips doesn't have a smile. And Tampa Bay demolishes Green Bay. Those are all final scores. Here, no score. The Jets threatening. Oh, is that a lateral? No, incomplete pass to Scott Durking, number 25. And that'll bring the field goal unit on. Good job by Kim Bocamper, too. 58 at 6'6". Six, six, you can see Todd goes back, and he has to throw the ball over the blitzing Bocamper. Hands up, 58 right there, and he just couldn't reach up to get it. Fourth down, Pat Leahy on, maker of, I believe, 11 of his last 12? No, 12 of the last 13. Okay. And 17 for 23 on the year after a slow start. This is a relatively easy 29-yard attempt. And the Jets take the early lead. this noisy sellout in Shea Stadium. And talking about this game, biggest since back in the Super Bowl year of 68. 3-0 New York. Three minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Jets on a 29-yard field goal by Pat Leahy have the early lead 3-0 against the Miami Dolphins. Fulton Walker will be the middleman of three for the Dolphins as Leahy tees it up. He was a four-year soccer star at St. Louis University and then picked by the Cardinals as a free agent. 
He floats this one down the middle. And finally, Don Besselu has it and almost broke it. He's to the 29-yard line. There was only Leahy left downfield when the tackle was made by Donald Dykes, Jesse Jefferson. Jesse Johnson of the Jets making that last stop at the 28-yard line. Miami down, 3-0. Woodley has Cephalo left and Duriel Harris to the right. Eddie Hill. And Hill rumbles to the 32-yard line from Memphis State. Hill in his third year. He's uh, already had a great victory, has Eddie Hill. As uh, Bill Lawrence Barker talks to his defense, his two-year-old daughter was seriously ill earlier this year with spinal meningitis. and. Thank goodness has recovered. Very trying time for Eddie Hill and his wife and family. Walt Michaels across the way. He had a trying time early on the season as well, 0-3, but now has the hottest team in the American Football Conference. Hill again. Good defense. Lance Mel, number 56, one of the three Penn State linebackers for the Jets, made the stop. Dick, the player was forced by Joe Klecko, 73, inside that left tackle of the Miami Dolphins. And Don shula has got to be wondering what the New York Jets have over his Dolphin team. Over the last few years, he has just beaten up on the NFL, but not this team. They are, they're 0-6-1 uh, in the last three years against the New York Jets. Johnny Lynn, number 29, comes into the deep secondary for the Jets in their nickel defense. Third down and six. Fumble. And who's got it? You'll hear a roar if they motion Jets, but it's Miami's ball. An alert Dolphin able to come up with that loose ball. Trouble on the exchange between Dwight Stevenson, who's playing that center spot with Mark Denneter out for at least four weeks with a torn calf muscle. Dick, you make an excellent point. And Greg Buttle, number 51 of the Jets, jumped up there in the middle. You see him, and I think it probably uh, affected the concentration of Stevenson and therefore the bad snap. And Woodley able to fall on the ball. Harper drifts back to the New York Jets 28-yard line. Oros will deliver his punt from inside his 20. Jets put 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Fair catch, Harper in a crowd, he's bumped. And a flag goes down. Ball goes to the Jets anyway, but I believe they're going to call Miami for interfering with Harper, giving not giving him a fair chance to catch that ball. Excellent call, I believe that's the point. The wind held the ball up ever so slightly. And of course, there you see. Interference against yes. Miami. Good call, Dick. For a moment, you couldn't tell whether Harper ran into his own man or whether a Dolphin ran into him. Here it is. Hand up. He now has to have an opportunity, an unobstructed opportunity, to catch the football. And you can see the Miami Dolphins people trying to get out of the way, but they can't tell what the wind is doing to the football. Harper's the only one watching it. Fulton Walker, number 41, did everything he could to avoid Harper, but he really didn't give him a fair chance to field the ball. Interference with the opportunity to make a fair catch. 42 of the kicking team is first down. 42 is Lyle Blackwood, but it appeared that 41 Fulton Walker actually was more involved in that little fracas. First down at the 41. The Jets leading 3-0. Final minute, first quarter. Freeman McNeil to the 46-yard line, a gain of around five. Don Shula and Walt Michaels, they have one very important thing in common, their background with the Cleveland Browns and the great Paul Brown. They were both on the Browns' defense in the year 1952. Michaels a linebacker and Shula a defensive back. Ball at the 46-yard line, second and five. Richard Todd playing with a heavily protected broken rib. The 
toss to McNeil. Great running by McNeil Boy. inside. Brzezinski hit him head on at the line of scrimmage, and McNeil kicked free and picked up three. And that is the end of the first quarter here at Shea Stadium in New York. The New York Jets leading the Miami Dolphins 3 0. This is Byron Day in New York. Out in Kansas City, the Chiefs having no problem with the Seahawks. Billy Jackson taking it in from two yards out. It's 40 to 13 now in the fourth quarter. The Chiefs looking to move into a tie in the AFC West. Second quarter, Shea Stadium in New York. The Dolphins and the Jets. Jets lead 3-0. Ball at midfield. A critical third and short. And this is Scott Kirking. First down at the 39. Excellent job by the offensive line. The right side of that offensive line. And Durking is able to squirt up in there. Good pull by number 60. Of the Dan Alexander and... Turkey can get up through there. That's a big first down. Now I would expect the New York Jets to try to air it out here to Walker or to Lamb Jones. They've got Walker far left side. Todd is going to air it out to Walker. Oh. Well, he is a blur going down that left side, and Todd just missed. That is the longest throw of this game thus far for Richard Todd, and he showed he still got plenty of arm. And he gets up, and now Richard Todd is limping somewhat, but here's Wesley Walker in isolation, the man with great speed, and this is what the Miami Dolphin defensive backs have to protect against. They know he's going deep, and he still runs by them. He gave the corner Gerald Small a little jelly leg coming down there and then really, <laughs> really put it on him. Todd appeared to be shaken a bit as he would hit. He was hit just as he threw the ball. He's four for nine passing, 36 yards. Draw, Tom Newton. And short yardage into the teeth of that Miami defense. Baumauer and Bo Camper, a couple of the bees in the defense they call the swarm, making the tackle. Oh, Richard Todd needs is one other injury. If you're wondering about Wesley Walker and what effect he's had for the Jets against the Dolphins in seven games, he's had 30 catches for a 21 yard average and six touchdowns in Miami the first time, eight catches, 112 yards and two TDs. So he will be a big weapon for Richard Todd today against Miami. Jets with a 3-0 lead have a first down at the 25-yard line. Now an update, Byron Day. Okay, Dick, thank you. Out in Oakland, the Raiders have struck first. Mark Wilson throwing a 67-yard touchdown pass to Derek Ramsey. The Raiders on the board in their important game with the Chargers, 7-0 early in the first quarter. Dick? Thank you, Byron. Here it's 3-0, the Jets, and they're driving for more at the 25 of Miami. First down play, Todd to throw. Incomplete at the 11-yard line, intended for Walker, and he was well covered. And that was the first time one of Todd's passes floated. It kind of dove into the ground. Uh, Dick, an observation. Wesley Walker was covered. Lamb Jones was right, right next to him, about five yards inside. He was open. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see them come right back with that. Here comes Derek Gaffney, 81, with the play from the bench. Joe Walton calling the plays. Jones, Lamb Jones goes out. You see the skies here in Flushing, New York. Temperature around 40 degrees. It's not as windy as uh, they had predicted. They thought the winds might be gusting 20 to 30. Second and 10. Newton running into his own blocker and stopped for no gain at the 25-yard line as Bo Camper and Betters teamed up on the tackle. You see Todd asking for whatever the three means, usually the three wide receiver offense. So far, Miami defensively has accomplished one thing. The last time these two teams met, the Jets had 166 yards rushing. And if they can shut down that running game and make Todd pass, 
that rib is a progressive injury. The longer he plays, the more it's going to bother him. From the 25, third and 10, and Todd goes down. And Ernie Rohn secured the tackle, and what an outstanding play by Dan Alexander. Did you see him block the tackler away from Todd so that he couldn't throw his full weight on his injured quarterback? Watch number 60, Alexander. He comes across to make a tap trap block, and he just helps to protect Richard Todd as best he possibly can. That's one of the things I believe the Jets have to avoid, any kind of fancy pass blocking up there in front. You see Roan 60, Alexander on Roan 55, and possibly avoids a, an injury to Richard Todd. A 49-yard-plus field goal by Leahy would match his all-time high. won 49 yards earlier this year and one other time in his career has matched his NFL career high and the Jets early in the second quarter lead it six to nothing. Jets lead six nothing Pat Leahy kicks it off Fulton Walker deep for Miami five yards into the end zone and he'll sit on it. Leahy, after drilling a 49-yard field goal to match his career high, sends one deep into the end zone, and Miami will play it from its 20-yard line. Leahy now 14 of 15 over the last five weeks. There he is from St. Louis University. Walt Michael said the time to go after the big one is to start playing in November and December, and as Jets heard the message, are 3 and 0 oh here in November. Possession time. Joe Costanza a note here of interest. New York has had the ball 15 and a half minutes. Miami about three minutes. Yet the Dolphins trail by less than a touchdown. Six nothing. A pair of field goals. And Woodley to the air. Cephalo with a pickup of about four. Cephalo from Penn State. Take an observation so far Miami when they've thrown the ball it's either been very short or to a running back out of the backfield and the Jets are now playing 11 guys within eight yards of the line of scrimmage. Miami's got to throw the ball down the field in earnest in order to kind of loosen up the defense. But don't you get a feeling they're trying to set up Donald Dykes that play was short in front of Dykes they want to bring him up and hope that they can go deep behind him. True but I wonder if they're really genuinely concerned about the New York sack exchange. This is Nathan in motion an excellent receiver. Here comes the screen. The tight end, Ronnie Lee. And he doesn't get much at all. Maybe a yard. A tight end screen. And doesn't work that well. And we have an injured jet on the play. Dykes and Lyons teamed up on the tackle. The number blocked from our view at this angle. So while they attend to the injured New York Jet, and there's a team that can ill afford another serious injury, let's take a break. Shea Stadium, New York, 10-25, remaining first half, 6-0 Jets. This is Byron Day in New York. Out in Oakland, Dan Fouts has brought the Chargers back. Here he completes a 20-yard pass to Dwight Scales. This set up a Chuck Muncie one-yard run. It's now 7-all in the first quarter. Let's go back to Dick Enberg and Bob Trumpet. We hope you'll be with us this coming Thursday, NBC's Thanksgiving Day special from the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, and the Kansas City Chiefs, a winner today, and the Lions, also victorious, two teams with playoff ambitions and a most meaningful game on the holiday. Hope you'll join us here for NFL 81, 12 o'clock Eastern time. Two teams with great young running backs, Billy Sims of Detroit, Joe Delaney of Kansas City. Have you seen him yet? Oh, yeah, he can go. He is a delight. Let's go back to the injury as they still attend to the fall in New York Jet. Donald Dykes, number 26. Here he comes up to make the tackle. Appears to be a pretty slippery field out there, and he may have, in fact, been injured by his own player. 93, Marty Lyons. You see him holding his arm. And last week they lost a defensive back to a broken arm. That was Jackson. I'm not sure that that is, in fact, what's wrong. 
But while they work on Donald Dykes, who is playing in Jackson's spot at the left corner, let's run down all the scores. We'll do those scores right after we take a commercial break. 10-25, remaining in the second quarter here at Shea Stadium in New York, and the Jets lead the Dolphins six to nothing. Donald Dykes being taken back to the Jets team room with his arm in a sling, could be a shoulder or a collarbone, and that really puts the pressure on Walt Michaels' defense. Jesse Johnson, second-year man from Colorado, normally a safety, will have to play that left corner. It is third down and five for Miami, trailing 6 nothing. And they go right after that corner. Is he inbounds? Yes, first down at the 41-yard line. Duriel Harris does the toe dance just before crossing the sidelines. And we now understand the report on Dykes is a dislocated elbow, and just that sound brings pain. And Walt Michaels now has to go down to his third level to find a place uh, for someone at that left corner. Last week against New England, the broken rib by Taub, a severely sprained ankle by the backup quarterback Ryan Augustiniak, still in a Massachusetts, uh, Boston, Massachusetts hospital with a severe chest injury, Rasmus and a knee. Jackson broke his arm, and now Dykes, a dislocated elbow. Slamming up the middle goes Andra Franklin from Nebraska. And you'll be seeing his alma mater in the Orange Bowl January 1st here on NBC. Final, the Chiefs defeating Seattle 40 to 17. They're the number one rushing team in the NFL, and they'll be meeting the number two rushing team, the Detroit Lions, on Thursday. Dick, you mentioned all the injuries that the Jets had last week in New England. But they won that game, and that is normally very unlike a football team to win, to play decently, and to have that many injuries. Of course, Woodley was injured in the first game against the New York Jets when he suffered a fractured rib. This is Nathan, and he has what appears to be a first down at the New York Jets 48-yard line. It's the first time that Miami has crossed midfield. A six-yard gain for Nathan. Absolutely essential for Miami to run the ball decently today to come up with second down and two or three as opposed to second down and ten. With second down and ten, you played right into the hands of the New York Sack Exchange, even with Jesse Johnson playing cornerback out of position. First down, New York 48-yard line. Now Johnny Lynn, number 29, is playing at the corner. Nathan, only about three. Marty Lyons, from Alabama. He and Nathan were teammates with the Crimson Tide, and Ron Crosby made the tackle. Second down and seven. Nathan, who leads Miami in rushing with 533 yards and an excellent 5.9 yard average, also has 39 catches. Tony Nathan, and he's to the 31 yard line and a first down. And Woodley just got rid of it as Mark Gastineau was on top of the Miami quarterback. A 14-yard gain. Dick, it's interesting that both of these football teams have all-purpose backs. Miami has Tony Nathan a shovel pass forward. And most defensive linemen are taught that once that quarterback goes behind any running back back there, it is pass all the way. That's one of the things about Don Shula. He always seems to find a way to get the ball down the field. He calls the plays for the Miami Dolphins. Trailing 6-0, Woodley a first down of the Jets, 31. Nathan's wide open. Nathan capped him up with the ball at the 25, but Woodley did an excellent escape job as Lance Mel was in on top of him as they dogged the linebacker. And Dick, that's one of the reasons that Don Shula wants David Woodley at quarterback. He likes his mobility. Uh, Shula has stated publicly many, many times as you watch 56. Stevenson just gets enough of the center, and Woodley escapes. That's one thing that the Miami Dolphins did not have for years and years with Bob Greasy. 
And as opposed to Don Strzok being the starting quarterback, he goes with the mobility of the 13th quarterback taken in the 1980 NFL Draft, David Woodley. Woodley showing respect for that excellent pass rush. Is 5 for 8, only 39 yards. He's had to throw short and throw quickly. This one a little longer, and Duriel Harris has a first down at the 18. Johnny Lynn, actually the... If you count the last two games, he would be the fourth man to play the left corner. Bobby Jackson out with a broken arm. His replacement today, Donald Dykes out with a dislocated elbow. Jesse Johnson in for a couple of plays, and now Johnny Lim playing left corner. And in every football game, a coach is looking for a weak point. And they're not necessarily picking on Johnny Lynn, but the fact that he is like the, the third quarterback in line to take that spot, that is where they're going to go, hopefully for the rest of the day if you're Don Shula. Uriel Harris, the leading receiver for the Dolphins, had 40 catches coming in. First down inside the 20. Woodley hey. play action. Almost intercepted. There was no one there. Eddie Hill was closest to the ball for Miami. Jerry Holmes, number 47, on the coverage. Holmes is now on the coverage for the Jets. Mike Augustiniak. And all the Jets players and fans and coaches, uh, they sent along that message to their fullback, who is in a Boston hospital, uh, went into shock, internal bleeding, chest injury in the New England game, and fortunately going to be okay. And they say he's going to be back in uniform, may not play during this regular season, but if the Jets get in the playoffs, then uh, Augustiniak would be available. We welcome those of you who have just seen Kansas City defeat Seattle. It's 6-0. The Jets lead Miami. Miami deep in New York territory here in the middle of the second quarter. Complete and dropped immediately at the 15-yard line. Tight end Bruce Hardy, and he was drilled by Daryl Ray. Dick, I still wonder why they're going away from that right side of the Jet defense. They've got a third-string cornerback back there, and the players are being called from the bench over the middle. This is a good hit. Daryl Ray, the center fielder. The weak safety of the New York Jets on the tackle for very little gain now third down and what seven no long yardage as cephalo goes wide right joe rose split right and harris is to the left woodley a first down at the four yard line the young quarterback, his receiver is covered and feeling the pressure, especially from Mark Gastineau, ducked in under that rush and picks up first and goal. We spoke of it just a few minutes ago, Dick, the value of that mobile quarterback. He's young, he can take the punishment, and as long as he can, that's what Don Shula likes about David Woodley, the fact that he will run it. Nick Henberg, Bob Trumpy, Shea Stadium in New York. A battle for first place in the AFC East. Miami's Dolphins leading by a full game over the New York Jets. They tied 28-28 in overtime in their first meeting earlier this year on a steamy afternoon in Miami. This is the 13th play of the Miami Drive as they go for the lead, trailing 6 to nothing. Tony Nathan. Touchdown. Ooh. Franklin threw a crushing block to free Nathan for the score. You'll see the play coming right at you. A good student body right in your right, Dick. 37, and then Nathan with his agility ducks underneath the tackle of 28. Daryl Ray into the end zone. 6-6 with the extra point coming up. Watch Franklin blow out Troy, the strong safety, and then Nathan, a nice job on Ray. Here's the driver point by Von Schaman. for the first time takes the lead. Less than five minutes remaining in the first half here at Chase Stadium in New York. Miami Dolphins seven, the New York Jets six. This is Byron Day in New York. Out in Oakland, the Raiders have just scored again. The touchdown was set up by this play. Watch this. Fouch pass is tipped by John Matuzak. It's gathered in by Dave Browning, who takes it down to the two-yard line. Derek Jensen ran it in from there, and Oakland finds itself in the lead, 14-7 in the second. Dick? 7-6. Miami leads for the first time. Four minutes and 56 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Von Schaumann to kick off. Zone and Harper back. This is Harper at the three. Ooh, his 
Rush. He covered at the 16 yard line. Chris Harper on the kickoff return. Stopped by Jim Jensen. So the New York Jets with a couple of field goals trailing now seven to six to the Miami Dolphins and we have a penalty flag down. Don Besselow 46. The injured player is Fulton Walker 41 of Miami. I believe we've got some extracurricular activity on the New York Jets stick. Some of the Dolphins out on the field indicate that it was a vicious uh, block on Walker. That it was uh, beyond the point of good blocking duty by one of the Jets, and it is a personal foul, New York. And the Jets having the finger pointed at them by the Miami bench. You can just see several players pointing at the Jets huddle as if to say, you're the one who did it, and we're not going to forget. You know that feeling. <laughs> That's an comfy. uncomfortable feeling to have, Mr. Enberg. quite pick up the culprit on that one apparently it was Tom Newton uh, was the man indicated as guilty of the penalty so with the injured Walker of Miami we're going to take a break the score is Miami seven the Jets six running down toward halftime Fulton Walker head down as they work on either a knee or an ankle off the field injured on that kickoff Half the distance to the goal line on the personal foul. The Jets start deep in their own end. Todd to McNeil. Oh, pretty move by Freeman McNeil as he ducked the shoulder inside, sprinted outside, and a first down at the 22-yard line. Larry Gordon and Gerald Small made the tackle. Nick, this is one thing that no coach can take credit for. You either have this move in you when you come to the game, or you never really acquire it. He steps up underneath the block, Marvin Powell, no, excuse me. That's uh, Waldemore. And then outside to set up the block, and it's a first down. Here the 22-yard line. The Jets trailing 7-6. to six, Four and a half minutes remaining in this first half. Freeman McNeil again. And he got three yards when it appeared he'd be stopped for no gain. Second and seven. Bob Baumhauer on the pressure. Obviously a predetermined move on the backside of the center. Joe Fields. And he's in there and it just couldn't stop him with an arm tackle. Lamb Jones leaves the game. And Derek Gaffney, 81 in. Gaffney more of a finesse receiver. And of course Wesley Walker, the other deep threat. Walker to the right and Gaffney slotted right. Jets stay on the ground to McNeil and a fumble and the Dolphins have recovered. It appeared that Larry Gordon, number 50, fell on the football at the New York Jet 32-yard line. And there's the first turnover of the game. A trap up the middle. You'll see a good job, a double-team block on the nose man. And I'm not sure exactly what happened, but he does appear to be carrying it rather loose. Uh, I'm not sure that's a fumble. From it, that angle, it certainly wasn't yeah. definitive, was it? It appeared that he was on the ground when the ball popped loose. Nevertheless, Miami ball. Oh, well, Miami leading seven to six. Nathan in motion. Woodley going for six. Oh, touchdown, Jimmy Savlor. No. Oh. Come up with it. He had two or three chances, had the ball, juggled it, and couldn't quite find the hook. But the ability to keep his eye on the football, watch how many times this thing bounces in and out of his hands. He's open, but the ball is thrown behind him. And that's good coverage by Ken Schroy. And then watch, there's once, twice, he's still fumbling with it. Really, Nance, Lance Mel knocks him away from the football, or that's six points. A game of inches. <laughs> oh, and frustration. <laughs> and frustration. It'll be second down and ten. If that ball is on the money, Dick, it's six points. And Mr. Walt Michaels knows it. Well, he's throwing into the open end of the stadium where that wind will knock the ball around a little bit. Screen to the tight end, Lee. Klecko and Holmes 
with a tackle for a loss. Jerry Holmes doing a good job for the Jets at the right corner. He was a free agent pick last year from West Virginia. Loss of six on the play, and they tried it on the other side, and it worked a little bit. But you see Klecko, the speed of Joe Klecko, he rushes the passer and is still out there to make initial contact. Marty Lyons down on the field now. Another New York Jet injured. Boy, it's been a war zone for Walt Michaels' club the last couple of weeks. So Lyons shaken up on that last tackle. We'll return in just a moment. Here's Marty Lyons, number 93, injured on that last play. He came into the game with a pulled hamstring, and that stride right there pulled it again. So it does appear that he will probably sit on the bench for the rest of the game. It'll be Ben Rudolph, number 76, now to take his place. And that's one quarter of the sack exchange now sitting on the bench. Rudolph, a rookie from Cal State Long Beach, third and long for Woodley and the Dolphins, leading 7-6. to six. Less than three minutes left in this first half. First of the day. That's their 47th on the year, Dick, heading toward a league record of 67. I believe this rollout is by design to get away from the New York Sack Exchange, give Woodley just a little bit more time to throw the football. And Salam, who is the, what, what is soldier of peace, I believe that name means. In Arabic, it does mean so. He used to be uh, Larry Falk when he was a star at Kent State. Changed his name. Woodley might argue about him being a soldier of peace on that last tackle. <laughs> Oros floats it to Harper at the eight. And he's dragged down around the 12-yard line. But important for the New York Jets, Jets trailing 7-6, to six, coughed up the ball in a fumble at their own 32 and actually pushed Miami back. Dolphins got no points out of it, and now the Jets with 2.15 left in the half go after the lead. Seven to six, Miami leading New York. And the Jets have the ball at their 12-yard line with two minutes and 15 seconds left in the first half. had two men deep and they were both the speedsters Jones and Walker well that certainly tells us that Richard Todd can throw the ball down the field today good play action fake you see it fools Doug betters and he has the mobility to get away from him but this just me may, may be the the week that Richard Todd had to take off in order to have his rib recover enough to play today he's open and I believe if Richard Todd practices the entire week this is a completion Checking the flags. He is throwing into the wind. If you can trust the flags uh, <laughs> in the stadium here. Often they're pointing at each other from one end to the other. Is that a safety or is it dead at the one-yard line? Safety for Miami. Larry Gordon on a dog comes in cleanly and Todd is dropped for a two-pointer. You know, Dick, I do believe 77, A.J. Dewey, is one of the reasons that this sack is, is so obvious into the end zone because uh, when Dewey moves around like that, he has to be accounted for by every offensive lineman. It may change the entire blocking scheme of the football team. And with, with him moving in this spot and out of that spot, I, I believe the uh, New York Jets just missed a blocking assignment. Gordon didn't appear to be touched by anybody. So Richard Todd... Dropped in his own end zone, and the score is now 9-6, to six, Miami. And the Dolphins will get the ball back with 2.04 left in the half on the free kick from the Jets' 20. At one point, we came into this game expecting the New York Sack Exchange to uh, be tough on the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins had allowed eight sacks last week. The New York Jets got eight sacks. But so far, the Miami Dolphins have the only two sacks of the day. Well, Michaels, uh, he's doing everything he can, of course, to protect his quarterback, Todd, but uh, Gordon 
found the opening, and we should go back. Waldemore is playing for the injured veteran Rasmussen, and of course, uh, again, that all comes with a scouting. If you have a man that isn't quite as experienced, you try to put a few extra things on him, and he picked up Dewey, and that left Gordon free. Uh, Dick, I have a question for you. Does Larry Gordon get credit for those points as a sack in the end zone? Does he get two points? Oh, sure. Does contract he? time, you mean? Uh, no, I do. <laughs> <laughs> it may help. Anyone who wants it, but actually, Gordon is registers a safety, and that'll go on his uh, master two list. Points. Oh, okay. So Chuck Ramsey will punt on the free kick. Vigorito at the 34. And Vigorito back close to the 49-yard line. So Miami in excellent field position at the two-minute warning. One minute and 55 seconds showing on the clock. Miami, where the safety has taken a 9-6 lead, and they've got plenty of time to try to get more. Well, the banners are here at Shea Stadium in New York. <laughs> Dick Enberg with Bob Trumpy. Uh, you uh, want to make a point. Yes, I do. I want to make a correction. Uh, I failed to credit Abdul Salam for his one sack of David Woodley when I said that the New York Sack Exchange had none. It's been 10 years since these New York Jet fans had a football team to really cheer about, and uh, they're obviously in support of the Jets this season. Yeah, all week long, of course, with a chance for first place, and uh, columnists here, New York City, Recalling those great days, the 68 season and Joe Namath and the pass rush of Philbin and Elliott and Berlin Biggs as they went to the Super Bowl and beat Baltimore. Eddie Hill picks up six yards to the to the New York Jet 45 yard line and it's second and four. Let's run down the scores finals. The Steelers win big in Cleveland 32 to 10. It was Cincinnati staying in first place 38 21. No huddle by Miami. Woodley, that could be intercepted. As the pass died, Cephalo going deep, and two Jets, Lynn being the closest to the ball, and that ball hawking uh, free safety, Daryl Ray, 28. All right, now as Miami goes to the huddle, we'll continue the scores. Buffalo had to pull one out late against New England, 20 to 17. Big upset, the Giants win in Philadelphia, 20 to 10. Detroit. Wins again. That's two times this year they beat the Bears. This time at Soldier Field, 23-7. Bum Phillips and the New Orleans Saints win at Houston, 27-24 against his former team. Third and four. Complete to Nathan at the 36-yard line, but a flag is down where one would suspect holding against Miami. Nine yards if it counts. Personal foul, ooh, against the Jets. You know what made B. Dick is a head slap by one of the defensive linemen on the offensive linemen of the, New of the Miami Dolphins. That flag was thrown very, very quickly. There was no doubt in the official's mind. 52-year-old Walt Michaels, who played his college football at Washington and Lee, pro linebacker with the Browns for 10 years. Gibran, Noel, Shula, Michaels, all on those Cleveland teams, all going on to become NFL head coaches. There's another head coach too, Mike McCormick with the Baltimore Colts. That's right. A big one against the Jets. Personal foul, 73 defense, it's first down. Joe Klecko, the defensive right end, guilty of the foul, and it gives Miami field goal range. Now they can, uh, the Miami Dolphins can take their time. Uh, there's no reason for them to hurry. One minute and 20 seconds left. They don't have to be in a rush to get the ball in the end zone here. Miami with a safety and now trying to get seven more. A draw to Nathan. Klecko got him from the backside and Crosby met him up front. And no gain, maybe a yard on the play. They take their first time out, Miami does, to kind of regroup. Woodley will go to the sideline, and on the field, he'll talk to Don Shula. In the booth, he will talk to Bob Greasy. Remember that name? Boy, what an advantage for a young quarterback like Woodley to have Greasy there to tutor him. We'll be right back. 109 left in the half. You take the headset away, and you can almost picture that face in an engineering classroom on the campus of Purdue University. 
He indeed engineered many a long scoring drive for Miami, and now he's talking downstairs along with the other assistant coaches, the Miami scouting booth on the press box level to David Woodley. The play has been called. Second down and nine with 109 left in the half. Ball at the Jets 21. Yes to no. A wild and crazy defensive end. And with that sack, his 15th of the year, he's only a half sack behind the NFL leader, Klecko. You know, Dick, there's one thing to getting 46 sacks or 48 sacks on a season, but the most important statistic is when you get them. When you get them, and the score is 9-6, to six, and it's a second down and long yardage. That's important. And may have taken him out of field goal range. There's that forward pass incomplete. It's an incomplete pass. The shovel pass, even though it's behind the line of scrimmage, is a forward pass. So that is not a fumble. But look at Gastineau. He's got this crowd going crazy. Dick, they were right there again, too. Klecko, Gastineau, Salam, Ben Rudolph, all four of them are right there. But of course, the design of the play is to let the defensive lineman in and then hopefully the running back is up ahead of him and he can shovel it forward. Now what do you do now? Ball's at the 29. And it's fourth down. And apparently, kicking into the open end, Don Chula has elected not to go for the field goal. It would be approximately a 46-yard attempt. And Chula is going to call time with 32 seconds left in the half. You see Don Strock, number 10, who is the holder for Miami. And I guess, is Von Schaumann in there? I don't see him. Yes, he is. Well, this timeout taken by Miami would now tip off the New York Jet defense to be aware of anything funny. It's like, like a batter stepping out of the box and saying, going through the signs again, coach, and now everybody's right. looking. Looking for the squeeze play. Von Schaumann is in there. There's Gastineau, who played his college football at East Central Oklahoma. He played at Arizona State earlier. Yeah, this defensive line of the New York Jets, with the exception of Marty Lyons, as he celebrates that play, they really make a mockery <laughs> of the NFL scouting system. Where'd you say he's from? East Central Oklahoma? But he started at Arizona State, so, and then he transferred to East Central Oklahoma. He's a very interesting guy, not only an emotional one. He, his major was Spanish. He collects Indian artifacts. He has over 150 arrowheads and uh, some 15 or more tomahawks. He collects uh, adobe pottery. His uh, dad was a professional boxer. And at 6'5", 276 pounds, he can get you a seat on any bus you want to ride on. <laughs> That's right. But anyway, to continue, Salam is from Kent State. Klecko is from Temple. Marty Lyons is the only defensive lineman of the Jets from one of the big football factories that many people speak of in this country. Right from Alabama. Good scouting by the Jets. Von Schaumann, a 46 and a half yard attempt. His longest this year, or ever, is 53. Longest this year, only 42. This would be his longest of the year, if good. It's good. And you could see the win really tail that one right through the uprights and then almost back the other side. Von Shaman's longest of the year as he matches Leahy's longest of the year. And the Dolphins get five points out of the series. Think he's happy about it? No doubt. No doubt from 47 yards. Just give me a chance. All set up by the safety. The punt. Miami keeps the possession, and they've made pretty good use of field position in the second quarter. The New York Jets have had terrible field position. They did have a lot better in the first quarter. Miami's certainly taken advantage of that, that fact uh, in the second quarter. Officially, 46 yards for Von Schaumann. Nevertheless, his longest by four yards this year, and into a tough end of the field at Shea, and into some tricky wins. So the safety and the field goal, five points for Miami, and it's a 12 to six game. And Miami's got all 12 points in the second quarter. Miami has had trouble all year in the first quarter, being outscored in Don Shula's eyes terribly in that first period of play. 
but then coming back in fact they've been outscored as a total in the first half this year first quarter Miami's been outscored 55 to 27 and we're outscored three nothing today Harper at the two and good coverage once again by the Miami special teams Eddie Hill who started at fullback makes the tackle on the special teams and a flag is down now the hitting is certainly being done by the Miami Dolphins so far in the second quarter on the kickoffs and the the safety kick that they had their their special teams are it's true in a lot of situations Dick that the special teams really dictate the uh, the tempo of the football game holding Jets once again field position is terrible for them and they've had the ball three times in the second quarter at the eight after a penalty on a kickoff at the 12 and now it'll be at the 10 yard line as they will go half the distance to the goal line actually the full 10 yards in this case for holding. Kirk Springs. Tom Dooley, Southern gentleman, is our referee. Dave Hamilton, Tony Vittari, Jim Osborne, Banks Williams, Grover Clemmer, and Jack Vaughn, the officiating crew. With 20 seconds left, Durking gets it out to the Jets' 18 yard line. Clock is still running. 12, 11, 10. The Jets have all three timeouts left. Now six, as you can see. Apparently the last play of the half. Bruce Harper. He'll get out of bounds as the first half comes to an end at the 34 yard line. Harper out of the field of play. So the end of a rather unusual first half. We had scoring every possible way. And the Miami Dolphins in first place in the AFC East by a game over the Jets have a six point lead at the intermission. fallen here in New York and the Jets trailing Miami 12 to 6 again Bob Trumpy we might point out the importance of this game is not just one win for the victor today you're right uh, the Jets have played very very good football over the last six weeks and so far in this first half they've really struggled not because Richard Todd has been hurt but because they've had other guys go down Miami still trying to get their feet on the ground but that that field position in the second quarter for the New York Jets I believe was the, the deciding factor they just had first and 88 first and 90 to go on each uh, drive that they started even at that though Miami Miami had a couple of chances down deep on the turnovers and one time they were forced out of field goal range and despite the safety they still only got a field goal out of again good penetration and it appeared that the Jets with that uh, uh, defense rushing Woodley they got the crowd back involved before the end of the half. I wonder too in the second half Dick now what that cracked rib is going to do to Richard Todd. I, I, I repeat that as we said at the start of the program that this injury is a progressive injury and the longer he plays the more motion the more movement I believe the more pain he's going to have to tolerate and it's just going to be in the second half uh, how high of a threshold of pain does Richard Todd have. We're going to remind again that the Jets trailing by one game from Miami in the AFC East if Miami wins that'll give them a two game plus over the Jets Buffalo has won today they're in third place a game and a half back at the start whereas the Jets with a victory not only would tie Miami but if there is a tie at the end of the year between those two teams the Jets would have the advantage and they tied the first time at the Orange Bowl and whoever wins today of course has the edge Richard Todd back warming up apparently uh, he will be ready to go in the second half but uh, you got to admire the courage of this man and his entire team feels that way about him. Well I do believe too that the fact that Richard Todd played in the first half I believe he threw 15 passes completed eight for 77 yards is a great psychological lift but offensively the Jets have really established nothing. Now, they haven't run the ball particularly well. They haven't passed the ball particularly well and there's nothing that can really hang their offense in the second half on. They've got to establish something at the beginning of the second half in order to uh, to get out on top of the Miami Dolphins. Of course, the Miami Dolphin fans certainly don't want that. Relatively even, relatively even. Just one turnover that by the Jets and uh, it's been an evenly played game. That safety uh, was the I believe the big factor and, and both teams are struggling offensively Dick. 
Well, the yards passing only 45 for Miami and 65 for the Jets. The Jets, of course, going to the short pass and trying to protect Todd, trying to establish a ground game. And on the other hand, so it has been for Miami with that tremendous pass rush of the Jets. Uh, Woodley has gone to more of the shorter patterns and thus uh, not a very impressive passing first half. We'll see if that changes here in the second 30 minutes. Remember, they tied in overtime at 28 in Miami in game five of the season. Leahy to kick it off to Miami with the Dolphins in front, 12 to 6. And the win foils the drama of the second half kickoff as it knocks the ball off the tee. That's another factor for Richard Todd, too, is that as long as this game goes on, the wind kind of picks up, and they'll have to throw it a lot harder against the wind to make completions. Vicarito is deep with the injury to Walker and won't have a chance to return that one. So Miami will have it at the 20-yard line. And in comes David Woodley, the quarterback, and the Dolphin offense. Okay. Tony Nathan, Andre Franklin, although Eddie Hill was used much more often by Miami in the first half. Duriel Harris, Nat Moore did not play the first half. Jimmy Cephalo playing that wide receiver spot with Ronnie Lee at tight end. John Geisler, Taves at one guard position for Kuchenberg. Stevenson for the injured Dennard with Newman and Loxo intact on the right side. So Miami has had its injuries too. And right in the middle of the line, the left guard in the center. Woodley comes out throwing and flips it to Nathan. I'm clever running by Nathan. Gets five. Defensively for New York. Team that leads the NFL in sacks with 46 plus one today. Gastineau, Salam, Lions injured hamstring, and Ben Rudolph, a rookie, has replaced him at right tackle. Joe Klecko on the right side. Buttle, Blinka, and Mel, the linebackers. And we're going to have a change here. Donald Dykes injured with a dislocated elbow. Johnny Lynn replacing him. Holmes at the other corner with Ray and Shroy, the safeties. Second down, five. Actually, six from the 24. And Andre Franklin up the middle. Franklin for a couple, and it'll be third down and four as Greg Buttle from Penn State makes the tackle. Don Shula, who celebrated his 200th NFL career victory in the last Dolphin win two weeks ago in overtime against New England. Vic, he, he joined some pretty illustrious company there George Hallis, Curly Lambeau, and Tom Landry as 200 victory coaches in the NFL. That is a special fraternity. feet now cheering the defense incomplete to Cephalo at the 45 yard line appeared the wind as well as Gastineau's influence on Woodley helped misdirect that one Dick Woodley on this game so far has not really thrown the ball that well and the wood always I uh, should excuse me the wind always in this stadium is a factor that was a good tight spiral Mark Gastineau on the pressure on Woodley, but he is not throwing the ball particularly well. Wind or no wind. Tom Oros to punt. Ten men on the line for the Jets. Harper back at his 30. Good kick. Harper, a rather faint fair catch signal at the 24-yard line as it was well covered by Miami. The Jets have the ball for the first time in the second half. They trail by six points, 12 to six. That was a 49-yard punt, no return. Richard Todd with a broken rip as Bruce Harper and Tom Newton, although Freeman McNeil did most of the running first half. Walker, Gaffney, and Barkham, the tight end. Ward and Powell considered perhaps the two best young offensive tackles in the league. Waldemore for the injured, Rasmussen at left guard, Fields at center, and Alexander at right guard. the tight end in motion. Todd comes out throwing and hits McNeil. First down at the 32-yard line. No, he'll be shy by two yards. As they sent Barkham down to clear out and hit the running back McNeil in the flat. Defensively, Miami has Betters, Baumhauer, 
Dan Herter. Dan Herter great against the run. Brzezinski, Roan, Dewey, and Gordon, the linebackers. Gordon got the safety in the first half. Don McNeil and Gerald Small at the corners. And Lyle and Clem. Blackwood brothers at safety. Jones are to the left. McNeil plowing up the middle may have the first down. It'll be close. So far, both of these teams have been relatively conservative in their approach offensively to this game. Lots of back throws to the backs out of the backfield. Of course, the Jets trying to protect Richard's dot as best they can, but he's already absorbed a couple of sacks and is still out there uh, playing. Now it's interesting too that during the week someone stated here in the New York press that Richard Todd now realizes he is the leader of the team and felt that he must be out there today in this showdown in the AFC East. No question there was pressure on him to start. Durkin picks up the first down easily to the 38 yard line. We say pressure on Todd to start in that from the start of the week you read it you heard it. Uh, and Todd did that as the leader of this team that injured or not you have to play with pain now all of the uh, lexicons of the game and that uh, Todd whether or not he had read a paper or uh, heard a radio or a telecast uh, would have probably started on his own anyway but there never was really any doubt but what he would be forced to be in there today forced even by his own uh, attitude. 12 to 6, McNeil. Nothing there. Stopped at the 39 yard line. Did a great job by Bob Baumhauer there. 73, the nose man of that Miami Dolphin defense. He made penetration on the center, Joe Fields, and there was no place for McNeil to run. He has been the secret to that 34 defense. And a lot of coaches in the NFL will say, there's some scores. San Diego over Oakland, 28 21. Dallas leads at the half over the Redskins, 10 to 7. And the 49ers and Rams are tied at 17 in Anaheim. Here it's 12 to 6. Miami in front of the Jets. And McNeil, close to a first down, out to the 47 yard line. A gain of about eight will bring up third down and one. Blackwood at safety. Glenn makes the tackle, and Ernest Roan helped out. Todd has not thrown the ball in the second half yet. Yes, he did. The first play, oh, a little excuse swing me. to McNeil, uh, but not a long pass. You're yeah. right. You mentioned the pressure on Richard Todd to play. I was interested in a quote by Walt Michaels, who said on Monday, it's amazing how little injuries like this heal the week of a big game. And I'm sure Richard Todd read that one. Hardly subtle. flags down as Kevin Long on a quick hitter if it is not against the Jets has a first down at the Miami 45. Normally that official is looking right at the tight end of the New York Jets. We'll see if it might be holding on one Jerome Barkham 83. That's his responsibility. Holding is the call and denies the Jets a first down on third and one and will create a third and 11 for Richard Ty. Both teams, it was a simple game plan in one respect and a common denominator. Both teams went into this game not wanting second and third and long because of the protection of the quarterback. Holding, 83 offense. You tight ends know just exactly who's watching you, don't you? That guy caught me for 10 years. I knew what he was looking at. 83, Jerome Barkham on the hold. And third down and 11. This is a spot, as you just said, Dick, they do not want to be in. Blitz. And Todd rolling from pressure. Overshoots Jerome Barkham. There's a couple of former Alabama boys and teammates, uh, Baumauer and Todd. Baumauer now owns a restaurant with Joe Namath. Those Crimson Tide boys stay together. Yes, they do. Chuck Ramsey, and tells you something about the first half in that he only punted the ball once. Of course, a fumble and the safety figured into that statistic. Vigorito is at the Miami 25. Dying spiral. Oh, look at the wind 
didn't take that kick. When, at least here in the third quarter, moving the ball from, as you look at it, from the far sidelines toward the near sidelines, it'll be Miami's ball near the Dolphin 30-yard line after a 34-yard punt. Dare I say that those light flashes remind one of a snowflake? <laughs> Some of the folks around the country have experienced the first winter storm, and there was an earlier forecast that we'd have heavy rains, possible snow flurries today in New York, but fortunately, that was altered. No rain or snow expected late today. Tony Nathan to the 32-yard line. Gastineau and plenty of other green shirts in on the play, including Ben Rudolph, number 76, who's in for the injured Marty Lyons. Dick, I think it's interesting that with uh, the injuries to the New York Jet cornerbacks, that the Miami Dolphins really haven't taken advantage of Johnny Lynn. He's replacing Daryl Dykes, who was replacing Jackson because of a broken arm, and yet they really haven't tested him yet today. There he is right there. I would have thought that he'd be very busy this second half. Duriel Harris right on him now. Second and six. Gastineau has another. Maybe the New York Jets just answered my question, Dick, as to why the cornerbacks were not being tested. David Woodley has not had time to set up. You'll see an interesting thing here. The center and the two guards consumed by Rudolph and Salam. That turns the defensive ends, Gastineau and Klecko, loose one-on-one -on -one with the offensive tackles. And three-quarters of the New York Sack Exchange going at it today. That's the third sack today, so it is now up to 49 sacks for the season. That's an all-time Chet record. Incomplete to Joe Rose, and the Jets defense has held. And the fans show their appreciation for Gastineau and company. <laughs> These are serious fans. Once again, the underneath pattern by the Miami Dolphins, uh, obviously having little faith in the offensive line to hold out the New York Sack Exchange. We get the word that Marty Lyons with a hamstring, re-entering that hamstring, will not return in the second half. Well, you can see the that hit a Miami player, and now the Jets, Daryl Ray, takes a chance and recovers it. He may have thought that hit one of his teammates and took a gamble on falling on that ball. Dick, if that ball is touched by the hunting team though that's where they'll get the ball regardless of if uh, Ray fumbles it or not I believe so Oro's on a not a good snap just does get it away fans a big night on NBC our buddy Bob Hope stayed up and cheer with him the National Football League 60th year an all-star comedy salute to America's number one spectator sport awesome lineup for Bob Hope, what a team. Elizabeth Taylor, Olivia Newton-John, Susan Anton, Roger Staubach, O.J. Simpson, George Allen, Dick Butkus, many others. That's tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, NBC. New York Jets have the ball at midfield, at 50-yard line, dissecting the ball. Here in the third quarter, eight and a half minutes remaining in the period. Temperature dropping uh, 40 or thereabouts. And the wind, although as you look at the flags, it does not indicate uh, being that windy. Certainly the ball once kicked or thrown, you can see it, the wind having its effect. Todd is 9 for 17 and 92 yards. Jones and a first down at the 42. Johnny Lamb Jones from Texas. Still preferring to go with the short patterns, taking no chance of injuring Richard Todd. They don't want to hold that, try to hold that Miami defensive line out for too long. This is the best field position that Miami's had since the first quarter did. That's right. They've been playing in their own end and trail by six, 12 to six. Todd at the 100 yard mark. Walker. 
Intercept it or not? No, Small, Gerald Small. And one of the things that has alarmed Don Shula is the fact that his cornerbacks did not have an interception this year. And Small had a sure touchdown against Oakland at a critical time last week and couldn't hang on. This was a tough chance. Todd rolled this way. That would have been a tough interception if he had made it, Dick, but those are the big plays that I believe Don Shula expects out of his players. Turn that ball over to him right there. Second down and 10 at the Miami 42. Looks like a blitz, Dick. Incomplete, and a flag is down. Again, he goes to Walker. And whether it's Todd's rib injury or whether he's just errant in his throwing or whether that wind is having its effect, tough to tell, but those last two passes way off the mark. Now somebody had zeroed in, however, in that offensive line, and it'll cost the Jets 10. The Jets, one of the more uh, often penalized teams in the NFL, while the Dolphins uh, frequently the least penalized. Number 60 on it. Dan Alexander, the right guard from LSU. He was one of many key players in a brilliant 77 draft by the New York Jets. There's 60. On Baumhauer, 73, one of the best pass rushers and nose men you'll find in the business trying to grab a hold of that face mask. Second and 20. Ball back of the Jets, 48. Oh, through the hands of Wesley Walker, Gerald Small on the coverage. And the two previous passes that Todd had thrown kind of, I don't know, they kind of winged their way out there. That one was a good spiral, good and tight. I think uh, Wesley Walker was expecting one of those ducks that he'd thrown just a couple of minutes before. He really nails this one. Just 10 yards down the field, just trying to get half of it back. I believe that ball should have been caught. From a different angle. Todd standing in there. He's not buckling under that first line of pressure. Now to admire the man. Third and 20. Ernest Roan. And Roan has the sack of Todd way back near the 35 yard line. Once again, Dick, I got to think that A.J. Dewey moving in and out of that defensive line, that's twice that's happened. The outside man on the line of scrimmage seems to be almost untouched. Waldemore, 70, was the man that was assigned to him. But with Dewey changing the blocking scheme by moving in and out of the defensive line, I think it puts that split second of indecision in the offensive lineman's mind. They award progress at the 37. And on fourth down and a mile, Ramsey will have to kick it. Vigorito is at the 25 for Miami. Pretty kick. Perfect spiral. Vigorito was a muff, but he's able to pick it up and knocked out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Crosby made the tackle. A 51 yard kick by Ramsey. That ball bouncing back into Vigorito. And now that's a free ball, so he had to literally pick it up and just didn't get to it in time. So it'll be Miami's ball at the Dolphin 15 with the Dolphins leading by six. Miami Dolphins, that isn't the statistic I have in the first quarter. It was just the other way around as the Dolphins have not been able to outscore their opposition in the first period. Miami at the 15-yard line. And Nathan caught in the backfield. No gain. Joe Klecko, 73. Still very conservative, the Miami Dolphins. They're leading 12 to 6, and they certainly don't want to give the ball up here. They have lousy field position, but still running the ball primarily on first down. Cephalo to the right, Duriel Harris to the left. 
Nathan and Eddie Hill behind Woodley. This is Hill. Little misdirection. Didn't fool the Jets. It'll be third down and about six. Klecko again with the tackle. Along with Lance Mel, who leads the Jets in tackles this year. Uh, it's an interesting thing, too, I think, Dick, that uh, Joe Klecko, as a great pass rusher, is still one of the best guys in the league you'll find in pursuit. You find an awful lot of pass rushers who do nothing but pass rush. But this guy is a complete defensive end, Joe Klecko. Boy, and Klecko and Gasto, not only big and quick and strong, they're both over 270 pounds. On third and six, Woodley. Oh, what a hit at the 23-yard line. And I don't believe he made the first down. Quite a collision as Woodley, that was run all the way. Johnny Lynn from UCLA in his second year playing for the injured Jackson and the injured Donald Dykes at the left corner. Now I got to wonder in the third quarter here if, if you're relying on your quarterback to sweep by design to pick up the first down if there's anything left for your offense to do Dick. I mean I realize that the defense does not account for the quarterback but I, apparently Miami is so afraid of the pass rush that they're not willing to throw it. They would prefer to have their quarterback run it. Rather interesting choice. The measurement. And he's going to be short by that much. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC TV, New York. Shea Stadium in New York. Dick Enberg and Bob Trumpy, we're pleased you're with us on this cool November afternoon, late afternoon, early evening. The New York Jets and Miami Dolphins playing for first place. Miami leading by one game over New York coming into this one. The Dolphins have a 12 to 6 lead. There are the standings as the moment as Buffalo has won today. The Jets 6-4-1, one, one game behind Miami. And obviously, if the Jets would win, Miami and New York tied for first. Buffalo a half game out. Miami trying to move in front of the pack with a victory today. They already lead by one. They could really make a big advance with a victory. And they lead 12-6 to six with 5.09 left in the third quarter. They have to give up the ball here as Oros with a reserve man snapping the ball. And I'm surprised the Jets haven't gone after a punt. That's Harper. At the 25. And he didn't have quite enough sideline. There's a case where the sideline was really the 12th defensive player. Harper couldn't quite turn up field. Timeout here at Chase Stadium after a 52 yard punt, 8 yard return. Miami 12, New York 6. The New York Jets, they've been quiet since early in the game. They hit the first two scores of this contest on field goals. But they trail now 12 to 6. Richard Todd, better field position at his 32-yard line. Tom Newton. Newton, one of the cheerleaders on this New York Jets squad from California, free agent pick in 77. He was a blocking back for Chuck Muncie with the Bears. And was a long shot to make this club and really a popular team player. Dick, one note, it appeared that Richard Todd had trouble even making the handoff there. He appeared to be a little late from under center and was kind of struggling to get out to Newton to hand him off the football. Okay. Watch this. You see he has to really stretch, and as you said earlier in the game, that's what hurts the most when he bends over with that cracked rib. That's the left side of the rib cage, and he's reaching with that left hand. That had to be painful. Freeman McNeil... He's close to a first down out at the 42 yard line. Vern Den Herter made the stop. Veteran from Central College of Iowa. They have thrown the ball in this second half very sparingly. And with a rib injury like Richard Todd has, I'm not sure that he can play the entire game without pain. It's a matter of how much pain he can stand at this point in the ball game. You got to admire his guts for getting out there in the first place, though. You bet. First down. It's a first down, and for Freeman McNeil, he has 64 yards today, which gives him exactly 400 yards on the season. The rookie from UCLA, despite missing several games at mid-year, is the top rusher now for the New York Jets. Throw it downfield. Gaffney in the slot with Walker wide left.
Another quick pass. And complete to Barkham, the tight end. And apparently he was not touched by a Dolphin when he went down initially, so he gets up and moves it to the 49 of Miami, a nine-yard gain, and a heads-up play by the veteran tight end. Nick, I wonder how this pass was completed. It appeared to go through the hands of Brzezinski. It was very, very close to being an interception. The cornerback is almost there to make the interception. Small, and Jerome Barkham, who started his career as a wide receiver, one of those gifted tight ends that can play both. He has excellent speed on the outside and can block on the inside. Six touchdowns this year for Barkham. Second and one. McNeil, and I believe he fumbled, and Miami says they have it. They do. Betters made the hit, and Baumhauer, 73, recovered the football. McNeil coughs it up for the second time today. Dick, in cold weather like this, the ball gets slick, very, very slick. And there are times when your hands are totally dry that you just simply can't hang on to it. But nevertheless, Miami now has the ball on that turnover, beating 12-6. You'll make it. Twelve to six. The Jets had the ball at midfield, but Freeman McNeil for the second time fumbled and Miami recovered. Those are the only two turnovers of this game. David Woodley, the quarterback, has it at his 48. He's 10 for 19 and 64 yards total passing today. Miami leading 12 to six late in the third quarter. Woodley intercepted. Stan Blinka. And he's to the 47-yard line. <laughs> Blinka's first interception of the year. And on the first play after the fumble, the Jets get it back. Dick Don Shula has been... Very, very quick to pull David Woodley throughout this season. I think this is one of the reasons why. Discipline of a young quarterback. I believe he went against his key there. And Don Shula wants him to read his keys properly and not make that kind of mistake. You talk about the shift in emotions after the fumble. This crowd dead quiet. And now they're on their feet as Todd, barely keeping his, com completes and then dropped by Walker at the 31. Larry Gordon, number 50, the defender for Miami. Todd slipped coming out from underneath center. You'll see the pattern by Wesley Walker, and he is open. And this is not the first ball that's been dropped by Jet receivers. It may have been tipped slightly by Larry Gordon. We have a bad angle on it. But if it was not tipped, we won't be able to see it here. One another Gordon, angle? number 50. I don't believe he touched it. I think it was right in the breadbasket. Harry Coyle, our director, Larry Cirillo, our producer, right on that one from two different angles. Second and ten. Bruce Harper. And the Jets caught Miami in a blitz, and Harper with a good gain to the 40-yard line. It'll be second, third, and three. And now let's go to Byron Day in this update. Okay, Dick, out in Oakland, the Chargers have just scored again. Fouts connecting with Kellen Winslow for his third touchdown pass of the day. It's now 35-21, Chargers in front of the Raiders. Dick? All right, Byron. San Diego in a late-season slump trying to break out of it against the defending Super Bowl champions. Here it's a critical third down and a long three for Todd at the Miami 40. Jerome Barkham, first down. Barkham, the veteran, Dick, has been the only receiver, consistent receiver, that has caught the ball from Richard Todd today. So in the biggest third down so far, Jerome Barkham gets it. First down, excellent job. Barkham, a number one pick back in 1972 by the Jets from Jackson State. The Jets trail by less than a touchdown. It's 12 to 6. Miami in front. A minute 15 left. Third quarter. McNeil 
Trouble with his balance, and he's down at the 26-yard line in the grasp of Larry Gordon. The plus is he was able to hang on to the football. They do not need a turnover here. In case you're joining us late, McNeil having perhaps his best day in statistically at least rushing for the Jets. In case you join us late, the reason for the unusual score, they're not all field goals. The Jets scoring on two Pat Leahy field goals of 29 and 49. But Miami had a touchdown, four-yard run by Nathan, a safety by Gordon, and a Von Schaumann 46-yard field goal after the safety. Todd in trouble. Wide open is Harper. And it appears he has another jet first down at the 18-yard line. Harper was the safety valve there. Once again, the blitz by Dewey and by Doug Betters, and Todd was able to get it off. And that's the end of the third quarter. Miami's 12 to 6 lead is threatened. We'll be back after these words from your local station. Through three quarters, the statistics and the Jets in that regard convincingly ahead. But on the scoreboard, it's Miami 12. The Jets 6, first down at the Miami 18 yard line for Richard Todd and the Jets. intended for Bruce Harper. Zone coverage, Dick, all the way by Miami, which is rather unusual inside the 20-yard line. I believe the Jets were expecting some kind of man coverage. They got zone, which is certainly a changeup. You see Lyle Blackwood going out of your picture. Bo Camper, 58, coming back in coverage. That is very, very close to an interception, and Roan is an excellent receiver back there as a linebacker. He has three interceptions this year. Walker to the left, Jones to the right. Harper, a little too much lead for the little guy. And it's third and 10. The swing pass out of the backfield. Once again, Miami came with the zone. They may be changing up on the New York Jets. Most teams will run a man-to-man -man coverage inside that 20-yard line. Now I would expect the Miami Dolphins to come with some sort of blitz to make sure they get instant pressure on Richard Todd. Don Shula, Walt Michaels in this chess game at Shea Stadium. Third and 10 at the 18, and Todd calls time. And look at Todd. He is favoring a leg as he jogs off the field. I don't think that's a rip. Since he was hit in the first half, he's shown a slight limp. That's Jill Walton, the offensive coordinator with the baseball cap on backwards. And I admire Richard for making the decision. This is the big player of the game. He's got to make sure he's got all his ducks in a row here. And we're going to use this timeout to involve you in this important work. Eight seconds into the fourth quarter. Plenty of time. Miami leads by six. This is a third and ten play at the Miami 18. Dolphins have their fourth sack of the game. So they've out sacked the Jets heralded uh, front four by a 4-3 count. Now let's go quickly to Byron Day. Dick out in Oakland, San Diego, just scored again, taking advantage of an intercepted pass. Dan Fouts hits Kellen Winslow one more time. Fourth touchdown pass of the day for these two. They miss a point after, though. It's now 41-21, Chargers in the third. Dick? Thank you, Byron. On fourth and 20 after the sack, Pat Leahy to try his third field goal today. This would be 46 yards. Right into your living room, and it's a 12 to 9 game. They played to a 28 tie the first time, and they're playing toward a 12 tie with this field goal in the fourth quarter. Now that is 
a real reaction shot. <laughs> So now the big play in this game is Larry Gordon's sack of Todd in the end zone for a safety that led to five points. Oh, Nessalo is out of bounds at the three-yard line. So now the pressure on Woodley and Miami, and the Jets fans love it. Nothing worse could happen to a team now protecting a three-point lead in the fourth quarter. An excellent job by Leahy. I'm not sure that's what he intended. But first and 97, and you want to take a look at the big defensive play by Miami. You'll see 58 Bo Camper on the outside consume the tackle, then Rome with Alexander trying to get out there to make the block gets the tie. Fourth sack on the day. And that forced the Jets to settle for their third field goal, but now it's Miami deep in its own end from the three yard. as Shroy came up to meet Tony Nathan. And from the reaction of Klecko, it appears that we might have another injury, but maybe not. Tony Nathan limping off Nathan the field. Nathan hurt. You know, Dick, I'm amazed. I don't believe that the Miami Dolphins receivers, outside receivers, have caught more than four passes collectively on the day. Nathan hobbling. 74 stands his ground. Rudolph there, and he gets hit right on the knee with the knee with the foot planted in the ground. Second down, eight. Andra Franklin tackled by Lance Mel at the 11. It'll be third and two for Miami. Franklin, we talked about Newton being the blocking back for. Chuck Muncie at California. Franklin at Nebraska blocked for three men who gained a thousand yards or more for the Huskers. I am hip, Jarvis Redwine, Rick Burns. They all benefited from Franklin's blocking talent. And is he not the only one of those four gentlemen still in the NFL? It's an interesting note, isn't it? Dolphins are three of nine third down conversions today. And they go to Hill. and nine seconds left in this game in regulation at least Tony Nathan being attended to along the sidelines but it's a Jets ball at the Miami 48 yard line that's Newton with a fingertip catch and a short gain of about three Gordon who's played a big game at linebacker along with Ernest Roan for the Dolphins and Glenn Blackwood made the tackle big interesting at Bob Baumhauer Got a little shot on Richard Todd and helped him up off the ground. Two former Crimson Tide teammates. Walt Michaels, whose team slipped last year to 4 and 12 after 8 and 8 years back to back in 78 and 79. But a hot team coming into this cold November day. McNeil carrying the ball in the wrong arm. The left arm, usually when you're running.
running right. Yeah, that ball in the right arm, but after fumbling twice, he may have a reason for that. Great job by Bob Brzezinski, number 59. He took on Newton in the offensive backfield and kind of destroyed the timing of the play. You know, the New York Jets have had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity and still no touchdowns on the board. The Miami defense has done an outstanding job so far today. Fourth down. Five to go for the first down at the 42. Going long for Walker. And again, the wind blowing as we've seen it this second half. Anything thrown to the near sideline seems to go uh, with the wind toward the sidelines. And that one blown out of bounds. And that... Dick may be the difference between uh, Richard Todd not practicing all week long, just losing that little sense of the sideline. He's been off ever so slightly today. Of course, typical of Shea Stadium to try to show the win, and we all sound like we don't know what we're talking about. But the wins here are contradictory, to be certain. No wind upstairs. There seems to be plenty down. You can't quite tell which way it's blowing. Good snap. Joe Fields and Ramsey's kick into the end zone. Good hustling try by Kurt Sohn from Fordham. But it'll be Miami's ball at the 20 yard line with 10 and a half minutes left in this one. Miami by three. Let's go to Brian Gumble. All right, Dick, a few brief highlights from games already completed on this 12th Sunday of the season. Out in Cleveland, Brian Seif had a tough time with the weather and with the Steelers. He threw six interceptions to Pittsburgh ball players. In great part, that helped the Steelers gain their seventh victory. They beat the Browns by a final of 32 to 10. Out in Cincinnati, Kenny Anderson and the Bengals came on strong, going against the Denver Broncos. The Bengals won it by a final score of 38 to 21 for Anderson, a great ball game. He was 25 of 37 through the air for 396 yards and three touchdowns, and oh yes, he ran for one himself. The Bengals gained their ninth win against just three defeats. Out in Buffalo, the miracle victory of the week belonged to Chuck Knox and the Buffalo Bills. Trailing 17 to 13, just seconds left, Joe Ferguson throws it up for grabs, and Roland Hooks comes down in the end zone with just five seconds left. The Bills turn back the Patriots final 20 to 17. And out at Veterans Stadium, the Giants took the measure of the Eagles for the first time in 13 tries. This interception returned by Terry Jackson for a touchdown sealed the score at 20 to 10. Let's go back to Shea Stadium and Dick Henry. Thank you, Brian. The opposing coaches and former teammates, Cleveland Browns, Walt Michaels on the left, Don Shula on the right. It's Miami's ball. The Dolphins leading 12 to 9. Plenty of time. Ten and a half minutes left. Dolphins at the 20 yard line. They survive. Vesselo slipping out of bounds at the three on the kickoff and have it back at the 20. A fake and it's Woodley on a beautiful piece of ball handling and he's all the way to the 46 yard line. There's the longest run of the game, 26 yards by David Woodley. And did they slicker the Jets' defense on the fake to Nathan? One of the things that makes it work, too, is Tony Nathan going into the line of scrimmage there like he has the ball under his arm. Woodley, I believe, has been the leading ball carrier for the Dolphins today. Total of 41 yards now. That's Don Shula. He'll try any way possible to beat you. And Nathan leaping into Jets territory at the 49-yard line. Lance Mel picked in the third round last year out of Penn State. Number 56 made the tackle. Dick, I noticed, too, on the Jets' sideline that Richard Todd continues to throw when the defense is on the field to try to keep that rib warm and loose so he can continue to play. Got a look at Mel after a five-yard game. Both quarterbacks are hitting 50% on the game. And Eddie Hill, or is it Andre Franklin? Franklin has a first down, I believe. At the Jets, 43-yard line. Miami moving with the football and nine minutes left. Other scores in the NFL, late scores. Well, these are the finals. Pittsburgh 
32, Cleveland 10, Cincinnati strengthening its first place hold. Buffalo in the final minute. Giants a big upset at Philadelphia. Detroit still in the running in the NFC Central after beating the Bears. Nathan, who left the game limping on a bad knee just five minutes ago and now ripping up the middle for a good first down gain. Other scores. Uh, Bum Phillips going back to Houston and winning with the Saints by three. A blowout Tampa beating Green in the Battle of the Bays. <laughs> Kansas City a solid winner. It was St. Louis over Baltimore. 11 straight losses for the Colts. San Diego opening a big lead against Oakland. Dallas leads by seven at home against the Redskins. And San Francisco has a three-point lead against the Rams, 27-24. Refusing to be brought down is all the way to the 16-yard line on a Miami first down. 18 yards on the carry, and this is for the first three quarters of the football game. Neither team could really run the ball particularly well. All of a sudden, Miami in this last drive, I have a feeling that Mr. Shula got the troops together over there and said, hey, listen, do you realize what this is for? That's a good point, Bob. Miami had not picked up a first down the entire second half until this drive, and now they have three in a row from their 20 to the Jets' 17. Nathan. And that Miami line is beating the Jets to the punch here on this drive. Another good first down game by Tony Nathan. Good lead block, too, by Andra Franklin. And Mr. Michaels is wondering what's happened to his, at this point in the game, stingy defense. They're running at Kenny Neal, number 77, who has replaced Ben Rudolph, who replaced the injured Marty Lyons. 6.45 left. Second and five play. And Franklin... Second effort gets inside the 10 yard line. It'll be third and two for the Dolphins. And of course, for the Jets, with that clock ticking away, they can ill afford a touchdown here, or Miami would force them uh, into a situation where they'd have to score twice. But with a field goal, Miami's lead would be just six. Big play, third and two. It looks from here that he made the first down at the six-yard line. Sour expression of Walt Michaels as the Jets unable to stop Miami, or at least that's how it appears from the mark of the ball. Great individual effort, Dick, by Tony Nathan to treat it like the goal line, realizing the importance of this first down. And he dives over the line of scrimmage. Watch 37 under Franklin. Get right up through that hole. Try to hit somebody. Good job by the center on the nose man. And it is a first down. This drive all on running plays. Eight in a row. And it began with a fake by Woodley. And the 26-yard run from the Miami 20-yard line. And now it's first and goal at the six-yard line. Three tight ends, Ronnie Lee, Bruce Hardy, and Joe Rose in the lineup for Miami. It's Hardy, 84, to the left side. Lee on the right side with Rose, the wing left. Franklin for a yard. As the Jets' defense stretched the play out, and Franklin... Could not find a hole. Klecko and Blinka collaborated. That's one of the interesting things about the Jets' defense. Even down here at the five-yard line, they still play their linebackers about four and a half yards deep, Dick, so that they can come forward and take on those offensive guards and try to try to uh, stop any penetration of any blocking backs or any offensive linemen pulling. Franklin comes out and 31, Eddie Hill, who has a step more speed, joins Nathan in the backfield. Nathan. He saw the hole, but as he made his cut, 
He slipped and gains a yard. Blinka secured the stop with Mel there as well. It's third and goal. I don't know if this is going to happen, but David Woodley kind of continued the fake as a bootleg coming out of there after he handed on, handed off to uh, Tony Nathan. It'd be interesting to see if Mr. Woodley would once again carry it around the corner. He's staying on the ground, the Dolphins have chewed up a lot of time with this drive, and the clock now ticking down to the four-minute mark. They've had the ball for six minutes, and it's third and goal just inside the five. Nathan. Oh. Abdul Salam made the play, and it had not been for Salam, there was a huge hole. Perfect example of a defensive lineman, submarine un underneath a, an offensive lineman, and he's in the offensive backfield to make the stop. Actually, he didn't submarine anybody. Nobody touched him. Well, and there watch. was a lot of running room up the middle. And look at Walt Michaels. Oh, come on, Walt. You can do better than that. I mean, that's a big play. That's his answer to Mark Gastineau. Field goal, apparently, by Von Schaman will be only 23 yards. He's got it. But for the Jets, a moral victory. They're within a touchdown. That makes it a 15 to 9 game. And for the New York Jets and their coach Walt Michaels, three minutes, 10 seconds left. This is Brian Gumbel in New York. Out in Oakland, the route is clearly on, as if it wasn't before. Dan Fouts has thrown an eight-yard touchdown pass to Charlie Joyner. Fouts' fifth scoring toss. It's 48-21, still in the third. Let's go back to Cher. All right, Brian, that high-scoring San Diego Charger machine has been able to outscore their mistakes on defense, but they're doing it today at Oakland. And now it's the Jets with the ball. Harper at the seventh. Maybe the 23 before Ken Poole, number 78, could make the tackle. So for the New York Jets, it's first down and 77 for a touchdown that would win it. And for the Miami Dolphins, they have three minutes to contain New York and not only hold on to first place, but build their lead. The Jets have two timeouts left, Dick. They've got to use their time very wisely here. Newton in motion. And it's Freeman McNeil to the 31-yard line. A.J. Dewey made the tackle for Miami. Thanks to Mike Alper and John Gallagher helping us in the book, John Hewig. Joe stands our statistician. Two minutes and 40 seconds. And a six-point Miami lead. Second down and less than two. who has marred a good rushing day with a couple of fumbles. Uh, one was, uh, well, neither was costly. In fact, after one fumble, the next play, it was an interception for Miami. And the first fumble, uh, the defense of the Jets pushed Miami back. They got nothing out of it. Dick, I think the Jets could, should take a timeout right now, and then the next timeout they can use as the two-minute warning. They'll get one more playoff, but they're not using it. The fans at Shea agree with you, Bob Trumpy. Some boos from the crowd because... New York uh, hey. did not take advantage of it. Apparently, they feel two minutes and two timeouts is enough time. 15 to 9, Miami. Two minutes to go here at Jay Stadium. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Omar. Coordinating producer, NFL football, Ted Nathanson. Today's telecast produced by Larry Cirillo and directed by Harry Coyle. Our technical director was Steve Semino, associate director John Libretto, associate producer Glenn Adamo. Two minutes to go. First down Jets at their 34. They trail by six. Bruce Harper takes a wallop at the 36-yard line from Glenn Blackwood. He is the junior Blackwood, his brother Lyle, some six years older teams with him at the safety spot no huddle and almost deflected to the Jets Jones as Todd throwing under pressure from A.J. Dewey 
still have chose not to go to the wide receivers, trying to get the running backs up underneath, get them the ball, and hopefully break a tackle and get down the field. But they've got to use the sideline in this situation, Dick. It's been yep. an interesting game in that we've not really had a successful long pass by either side. I still go back to that two minute and 18 second mark. I don't believe the Jets have used the last two minutes and 18 seconds very wisely. Third down, nine. Oh, a good move by Durking to get a first down. He was stopped short of the first down and second effort to the 45. Clock running, 125. Remaining, Miami leads 15 to nine. Todd Walker. Complete to Wesley Walker at the 39-yard line. And Todd looks at the clock and calls time with 110. And the clock's still running. Now to 1-8. He called time at 111. They didn't stop the clock until 108. Dick, I have the feeling that Miami expected New York to just throw the ball out of bounds to stop the clock, but he does a good job getting by Elder Blackwood, and there was nobody even close to him. There's Gerald Small finally on the coverage, but that is a gigantic play for the New York Jets. And he zips this ball in, too. I must really pat Richard Todd on the back for playing this entire football game with an injury that would probably keep most of us home in bed for at least two weeks. And that ball was thrown as well as any all day. Don McNeil made the tackle. There's the timeout situation with 108 left. The Jets can stop the clock once, and obviously with a 15-9 deficit, they need the touchdown and the extra point. You know, Dick, it's amazing what adrenaline in a, in a human being can do, and especially in athletics, it shows so graphically here Richard Todd. I mean, he has a, a serious injury, but it has not seemed to bother his throwing, except in a couple of cases where he seemed to be cold and throwing the ball into the ground for this entire football game. 37-yard line of Miami with one minute, eight seconds left. Well, it had that playoff feeling at the very start of the drama of this game, and so it has been played. Todd, oh, what a play, but he does not get out of bounds. A great play as well by Miami to keep the receiver, Bobby Jones, in bounds. And so the Jets have to hurry. 53, 52, 51, 50. stop the clock as Durking was hit hard by Glenn Blackwood. 44 seconds remaining. It'll be second down and 10. That'll give the Jets a chance to at least think about this next play and not have to hurry. It's at the 25-yard line. And Dick, that last pass completion, Richard Todd was firmly in the grasp of Ernest Roan. I'm rather surprised that the officials didn't call it a sack. He did an excellent job to get it off. And so did the Miami Dolphins are keeping the Jets receiver on the field. You are correct, sir. No one sitting in Chase Stadium. 60,000 cheering for the Jets. Jones at the 13, and the clock running. And here's where those timeouts are so critical. 29, 28 seconds left. From the 12-yard line, the Jets need a touchdown to win it. Ooh. And very close to interference as Jones was leaving his man, Don McNeil, and McNeil had a piece of him. Uh, there is something that an offense can do in that situation, realizing that the defense has allowed one chuck in the first five yards. If you can get the ball up while contact is made, you may get a, an interference call. I believe that's what... Walt Michaels was claiming there. Plenty of time here now, no reason to panic, but throw it in the end zone. Win or lose, that man, Richard Todd, has won a lot of fans in New York today. At the 12-yard line, 21 seconds and one timeout left. They're mobbing 
Jerome Markham in the end zone as the Jets have tied it. And remember, the extra point is necessary for the victory, and here's Lee. consistent receiver on the day and dick i gotta make this comment haven't i seen movies that are written scripted and ended like this starring our president ronald reagan of 25 or 30 years ago this is just too good to be true give that man a medal and give this entire team a tremendous pat on the back they never gave up on a day when they really could get very little going until the final two minutes of the football game Barkham with his seventh touchdown reception of the season and the only touchdown for the Jets today. They saved it for the 16 seconds left mark. And now Don Shula looks for his own bolt of lightning. He has a good kick return man, Vigorito, waiting for this one. lightning strikes the Miami Dolphins over the last four years will be 0 7 and 1 against the New York Jets an astounding record Walt Michaels making sure that that deep line of defense is well back to protect against the long play a triple left formation The Jets will be three and four in the last seven games. Or excuse me, the Miami Dolphins will be three and four in the last seven games. The Jets six and one. Walt Michaels, a defensive coordinator, he led the Jets to that dramatic Super Bowl three win. He's telling his defense, stay back. This apparently the last play of the game. And the game is over. The Jets have moved into a tie for first place. They said he wouldn't play. 
He made himself play and courageously leading his team into first place. And for those who question the leadership capability of this young man, he has offered his answer today. And there's no question about his will to lead. Mark Gastineau, Jets 16, Dolphins 15. What a game! Now to Brian Gumbel.